Hi, Nathan with Complete Water Solutions, and now we're going to cover the E4 Series RO system as well as the preventative maintenance items, and we'll cover other topics like what you should be testing daily, and as well as we'll cover RO membrane changeout. Next, we're going to cover how to change an RO membrane on an E4 series RO system. So before we begin, please consult with your safety personnel or with the how to properly lock out and tag out your RO system, but our recommendation is kill all power sources and kill all water coming to your RO system. So first thing you're going to want to do is make sure you gather your supplies. So some things that you'll need are two half inch wrenches. You may also want to inquire, make sure that you have some O-ring end cap or end cap O-rings and those O-rings will fit over your black plastic end cap like so. Um, you'll notice that there's some O-rings on the inside of here. Don't worry, when you buy new RO membranes, they do come with an accessories packet or kit and they will have the small O-rings that go inside of here for you. Uh, so don't toss these out too. Uh, so you'll, you'll basically want to get some new O-rings for your end caps if you don't have them. You might be able to get away with reusing it, but safety always tells me, hey, just replace it when you got those off. Next thing you may want to consider is looking at and getting yourself some vegetable grade glycerin uh, or uh, for lubricating your O-rings uh, on your RO housing or as well as uh, lubricating the brine seal on the RO membrane itself so to make it easier to slide in and out. Um, I recommend before even changing out the RO membranes is on all your new RO membranes they will have a serial number and this serial number should be located somewhere on here or it might be a, a I know on some manufacturers they'll have a white label with the serial number. Record it. Uh, this is helpful for warranty uh, purposes is you'll want to have that uh, as far as uh, making sure that if you ever have to go back for warranty you do have the serial number. They may also ask you for your daily test and your daily log sheet so make sure you have that as well. Uh, next, next thing you may want to grab is an RO startup sheet. Now this startup information and startup sheets and daily log sheets are on our website. You can download those for free. But they basically have permeate flow, total flow rate, concentrate flow, your pressures and everything else. So when you put your new membranes in, you'll have all that information recorded. So the next time around when you go to replace your membranes, you'll kind of have an idea of where to set your machine at or how to set your machine. Uh, it's great and useful information to have. Um, and then this way, is, again, looking back, you'll be able to have this information, you'll be able to see it. And so in future RO membrane changeouts, people will know where to set the machine at. And so it's helpful. Um, so now, again, you'll need some uh, half inch drive uh, wrenches here to take these end caps off. So stay along with me as we go through and change this out. All right, now that we've removed this end cap off, you'll see that it kind of came off pretty easy. Now in your particular situation, it may not come off so easy. And so that's why I was able just to kind of grab on the hose and pull up. If you need to, sometimes there is a little bit of space between the housing and the RO end cap. You might be able to get a screwdriver or something in there to try to easily start to pry it up a little bit. Um, and you can also use some channel locks to try to grab the end of the end cap. What we don't recommend doing, or you could turn around, um, you know, and don't use a hammer, uh, don't use something that could potentially gouge the surface or crack this. Uh, again, it is just plastic. So, all right, so now we're going to go ahead. You'll need a pair of channel locks to go ahead and pull the RO membrane out or a pair of pliers. And as you can see, they kind of come out relatively easy. And here we are. 
So if you're not sure what RO membrane that you have in your machine, you can contact us or you can contact other manufacturers and give them that serial number. Uh, sometimes the model number will also be on the RO membrane, but a lot of times the serial number will be there. So we'll actually be able to look that information up for you if you need to. Um, and then next you'll notice there is a difference between this particular RO element and the one I'm holding here in my hand. One is fiberglass wrapped and the other one is tape wrapped. Tape wrap is a little more cost effective. Um, it's usually a couple dollars cheaper, um, but the fiberglass wrapped housings or membranes are very nice. Uh, they're a little more durable. Um, this tape can come unwrapped over time. Uh, so it does make it a little bit easier. So this is a new membrane. So here, uh, you can't see it on, on this side of the video, guys, but uh, there is an arrow that is pointing down. So we know that the water is actually coming from this side over and coming in on this. So if it's coming in on this side, you'll want to put a little bit of glycerin around uh, your brine seal and you'll just turn around, you'll drop your membrane in like so. And again, this is a new RO housing, guys. So a new RO system, so the O-ring should be okay on the end caps. Um, when you remove this RO element out, you may want to take, you, it's recommended that you take that bottom end cap off and you replace those inner O-rings. Again, your accessories kit will come with some additional O-rings to replace those out. It's just good, it kind of keeps a great seal around the permeate tube, and it's just a good, uh, good habit or practice to get into. And it really doesn't take that much longer to, uh, to take care of that. So, um, so anyways, again, this guy's is a brand new RO housing. Um, not gonna replace all the O-rings on it right at the moment, but uh, to get the RO end cap back on, you're gonna have to use a little bit of force, but it will go in like so. so had I lubed that up, probably a little bit. Uh, there was some moisture on it, but had I lubed that up with some glycerin, it definitely would have gone in a lot easier. All right, so let's go ahead and put our clamps back on. So real quick side note, if you'll notice that all these clamps are a little bit cocked off to the side, they're not, you know, straight and back and forth or whatever. This is so you can actually get your wrench in there to tighten those down. If you put them like this, they will touch each other and it makes it a lot more difficult to kind of get your wrench in there. So little, little tidbit, a little hint or whatever, uh, just put these a little bit off to the side askew and you should be able to have uh, better access to getting those tight. All right, so we got this all buttoned up, and so next we're gonna wanna go ahead and turn our RO system back on. But before we do that, uh, I don't recommend just powering everything back up and opening up the inlet valve and letting it rip, because uh, that can cause some water hammer and cause some damages. And so what I do recommend doing is go ahead and open up your inlet valve that would be feeding into your RO system. And you have a solenoid valve, just like the one I'm holding here in my hands, tucked back behind the machine. And it will have a switch on it that will allow you to manually turn it on or turn it off without any power. So what you can do is put it into the on position and open up your inlet valve, and this will start filling your RO system up with water. Uh, you can open your concentrate valve all the way here and keep running it until... So you want to check the concentrate to see how much, if you have any air still coming out, then you'll want to go ahead and uh, once the air stops bubbling through, you'll know that your RO system's completely full. At this point, you can go ahead and keep your concentrate valve open. And, uh, you know, if you have your recycle open or if you close it, however you wish to operate your RO system. But now you can go ahead 
and put your RO solenoid valve back into the off position uh, because now it will operate based off of the electric and you can go ahead and turn your electric back on and start dialing in your pump and your flows and your pressures and everything else to get back to where you normally would be at. So now that you've changed the RO system again, we recommend filling out that RO startup sheet because now once you set your pressures and flows, you'll be able to use that as a reference point in the future. If you have any more questions or need any more help on your RO system, please don't hesitate to feel free to call us or you can visit our website at www.complete-water.com or click the link in the description below. Take a look at our website. We do have a bunch of helpful information up there. And as always, thank you for watching this video. Hey guys, if you like this video and you found it helpful or found it informative, would you consider subscribing? maybe hitting that like button and also maybe forwarding this video off to others within this industry or maybe your coworkers, maybe they can find this information helpful too. And as always, we want to say thank you and have yourself a wonderful